In exercise four, we are going to have a look at the color effects room basics. So we're in the color effects room here. Um, if you haven't explored this, then you're missing out on one of the, the really, really big things of Apple color. Um, we take a look at just how it's laid out. When you go into it, it's just a, a real blank canvas. Uh, you've got the different things that we we can do on the right hand side here. Sorry, on the left hand side here. And then on the right hand side, we've got just the um, uh, the yeah, basically a blank canvas here. So let's just um, add what should we add? Let's just add anything we want to here. Let's just add a duotone here just for the sake of argument. So what we now get, now we've got uh, the duotone in there, and now on the right hand side, we've got uh, a parameters coming up. So these are, co are completely contextual. So as soon as we click on one thing here, it's gonna show us what we've got going on. Uh, and like all the other rooms, so if we have a look at the primary room, we've got our presets here. Well, not presets, our, our saved settings here. Secondaries will also have saved settings. Color effects room, we've got the color effects bin, which again is also a load of um, of save settings. So, you know, we've so I've got the uh, the, the curious style film wash uh, ones in here as well. Um, so these are just our, our sort of presets that we've got working on here. But let's get rid of all of these and bring back our, our duotone again. If we're going to be working in the color effects room, there's only one node that we absolutely have to have, and that is the output node here. So the output node says, this is what we're going to be taking out the color effects room and planting in to the primary out room. So how do we connect? I mean, what, what is it we're actually seeing here at the moment? The color effects room works like a, a nodal compositor. So we have our input coming in at the top and going out at the bottom. And so it works just like a river in some ways. So we've got the source of the water coming up here, which is our video, and it just flows down into the output, which is going out into the sea or whatever it's gonna do. Probably not try to stretch that metaphor too much. Um, so we can then create a, uh, a tree or, or we can guide um, the signal through our different effects to the output here. So we take a look at duotone. I mean, all these effects have got different parameters going in. The duotone is quite a, a nice, straightforward one. It says, where are we, where are we going? We're gonna go from a, Let's take us into a blue, maybe. Go into a yellow. Yeah, okay, we had a nice blue and then it's gone. There we go, right. So we're gonna go from blue in the shadows, go into a yellow there, bit of a split tone effect here. So duotone, in fact, a lot of these are, are fairly straightforward. We've got one input, one output. That's all there is to it. We've got other ones here. Uh, we'll take the blend, for example, here, which has got two inputs and one output. So I'm going to now take the blend out to the output here and bring my duotone into my blend. So in the blend, I've got a number going between zero and one. So zero. Uh, gives me all of source one, and a, a value of one gives me all of source two. And if I mix between them, I then uh, merge those together, I sort of blend those two together. So it's just like a, a, a regular sort of cross dissolve in some ways. Cool, so here I've now taken a very quick little tone. And I can do more and more stuff with that. We've got loads of um, loads of really nice ones here. Uh, let's have a look at the curve, because the curve's quite interesting. Uh, with 
color version one, the curve was just a curve. It took in the image and, um, you know, would then just apply that curve to, to the entire image. So if you wanted to apply separate curves to the red, green and blue, what you had to do was split the RGB out into three separate um, nodes, then feed each of those nodes into a curve and then merge them back again. With color 1.5, you've got a choice here of what sort of curve you're gonna do. You're gonna do a Luma curve, a red, green, or blue curve here. So with a Luma curve, we wanna just crank the, um, crank the contrast back up again. I can just punch that down in and then push that up a little bit more. So the curve is, we've got the input down here and then the output up along this side. We've just got a soft little S curve going on there. Nice, and at any point with these, we can bypass that certain filter and see it on and off. And when I hit bypass, we also get a little orange box coming on along there. So the color effects room is really a great room to be designing um, a kind of overall look, which you can then apply to loads of different um, loads of different clips. And it's got it's got huge advantages to it. It also, of course, has disadvantages in that it's um, it does take a little while to get your head around, and um, and the tools here seem a bit limited. But actually, once you get once you get going with it, there really is um, no no turning back there's some there's some excellent stuff here which you can start working with so let's create a little reusable a uh, reusable widget here um so a little reusable preset that we can um save and then share around uh, and it's going to be well why not we'll just do a um a sort of highlight glow so i'm going to first take my black and white here and there's a number of different ways to get to um to get to just just getting a highlight a simple way of doing that feed a black and white into a curve and then we'll just push the curve here maybe actually bring that there and then just bring the curve down there so it rolls off a little bit a little bit more a little bit nicer Let's take that so it goes just in the middle. There we go. Cool, okay, and we could just blur this up and then mix it back, but do something a little bit different. In fact, no, let's let's just show you what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna bring a blur in now. Let's feed that in. And we won't be uh, won't be stingy on the blur. We'll do a four four blur, four pixel blur, there we go. So how do we get these highlights, these blurred highlights, mixing with our original clip? Well, we've got a nice little add node up here. And the add node is again one of these um, uh, with two sources in and one output. So let's just plug that into the output. Bring my blur into source two. I could put it into source one, of course, but I'm gonna bring it into source two. In the, um, in the add parameters here, I'm going to turn the first one to, to one and the second one to zero. So source bias means that we're taking one. So we're taking the original image that's coming into source one. So that could go to zero and we'd have a completely black screen now. We can take that to two and we get twice the number of source ones. So add is a, actually a really nice way of... Um, of doing a, a different way of doing sort of exposure stuff because add really affects the the highlights more so it's a bit more like a gain it's uh it's, it's interesting little effect anyway let's put that to uh one and now we can dial in how much glow we want in so as i bring this up you can see that it's getting the image is getting a lot, uh, well, quite a bit brighter, especially around the highlights. But it's still not quite the effect that I was going.